Hi. As a follow-up to the video titled Will 2024 Be the Rapture Year? I'm going to give you seven reasons why I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. That is, seven reasons why I believe uh, that Christ will come into the air to take the Christians away before God unleashes a seven-year period of horrific judgments on this world. Here they are. Reason number one. The tribulation is characterised by God's wrath being poured out on the world. But for Christians, the wrath of God that we deserved was borne by Christ on the cross. We can expect trials and tests. Jesus said, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, John 16, verse 33. Uh, we will also experience God's discipline at times. The Lord disciplines those he loves, that's Hebrews 12, verse 6. But we will not experience his wrath. Paul writes to the Thessalonian Christians, God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation, deliverance, uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Reason number two. In the same letter to the Thessalonian Christians, Paul speaks about their steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 1, verse 3. What was that hope? It's identified in the same chapter, verse 10. Uh, they were waiting for God's Son from heaven, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. The word from is important to note. It's not through, which would mean protection during the trial, uh, nor is it out of, which would convey a rescue from the midst of trouble. It's away from. Jesus delivers us away from the wrath that is about to arrive, and he does this at the rapture. Reason number three. There's a promise given to the church in Philadelphia in the book of Revelation, but it's meant for all Christians because the Lord said to John, the writer, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches. That's Revelation chapter 1 verse 11. And those churches, as well as being literal, were representative of all churches down through the centuries. What was that promise? Chapter 3 verse 10. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world. To keep is to guard, to preserve, to protect, to hold fast. Jesus used the same word when he prayed to his Father for believers, keep them from the evil one. He meant keep them from being in the evil one, the devil. And in a similar way, the church will be kept from being in the hour of trial, the tribulation. How will we get to that place of safety? via the rapture. Reason number four. The tribulation cannot come <clears throat> until the church has been removed. Let me explain why. The tribulation is often designated as the day of the Lord. <clears throat> For example, the great day of the Lord is near, a day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, and so on. That's Zephaniah chapter 1 verses 14 and 15. Uh, one of the main reasons Paul wrote his letter, his second letter to the Thessalonian Christians, uh, was to allay their fears because some people had been telling them that the day of the Lord has already begun. That's 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 2. Uh, so he says to them in verse 3, uh, Don't be fooled by what they, those people, say, for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. Then he explains why he can't have come yet. Listen to verse 6. Uh, you know what is holding him back, for he cannot be revealed. Sorry, uh, you know what is holding him back, for he can be revealed only when his time comes. What is holding him back? The church, the body of Christians on earth. Hold on to that for a moment and listen to verse 7. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Who is holding it back? The Holy Spirit who dwells in every believer in Christ. Only when the church incorporating every true believer in Christ is taken away at the rapture, and the Holy Spirit therefore also steps out of the way, will the man of lawlessness be revealed, and then the day of the Lord ushered in. Reason number five. There has to be an interval between the rapture and the second coming of Christ to the earth to give time for others to turn to God. Why? Take believers who die, for example. At the rapture, all believers who have died during this age will be raised to meet the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 tells us, 
The believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Yet Revelation chapter 20 tells us about many who must have subsequently believed uh, because they have been martyred during the tribulation and are raised after Jesus has come back to earth. Listen to verse 4. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus and for proclaiming the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor accepted his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They all came to life again and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Reason number six. The book of Revelation is clearly divided into three sections identified by the Lord to John in chapter 1 verse 19. Uh, write therefore the things that you have seen, those that are, and those that are to take place after this. The things that you have seen are all the visions John had seen that day recorded in chapter 1. Those that are are the conditions described in the letters to the churches in chapters 2 and 3, which together represent the age we're living in. Uh, those that are to take place after this are the future events recorded in chapters 4 to 22, the larger part of that section being taken up with the horrific destruction brought about as the wrath of God is unleashed during the tribulation years, terminating when Christ comes with his saints from heaven in chapter 19. During all the events between chapters 4 and 19, there is no mention of the church on earth. Israel is mentioned, for example, in chapter 7, 12,000 from each tribe are redeemed by the Lamb just prior to the start of the tribulation and preserved by God uh, for testimony through that seven year period. Also mentioned in chapter 7 is a multitude of people from every nation on earth turning to God during the tribulation as a result of the testimony of those 144,000 Jews. But there's no mention of the church either suffering or witnessing for God because she's in heaven with Christ. Reason number seven. We are told to expect Christ at any time. For example, James chapter 5 verses 7 and 8. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. James is saying the Lord will be coming soon, in fact, at any moment. That would not be the case if there were seven years of wrath from God to come first. Seven reasons why I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. I commend them to you to think about and check out. But if you're a Christian and you disagree with me, God bless you. And to quote Paul Feinberg, May our differences never be cloud the joy and expectation of seeing our Lord at his visible and personal return. And finally, I say again with the Apostle John, Come, Lord Jesus.